Well, good afternoon, everyone. So let us continue. And uh, today we will uh, discuss uh, some new concepts uh, in Java. Uh, in Java. So today, uh, first of all, uh, uh, like as I said uh, in the previous class, that most of the um, uh, um, the syntax as well as the structure of the programs are taken from C and C++. So the common things uh, which are there in Java I means uh, we will see one one program regarding each and every concept, uh, each and every concept, and whatever is new, I will uh, just highlight that and I will uh, discuss in detail. So remaining uh, uh, all uh, will be the same as if you have studied in C. And it will be a pressure for you, those who have not listened to earlier classes, I means uh, those who have joined uh, uh, this uh, uh, sp spot admissions, also if any candidates who are uh, attending, for them also this will be a uh, pressure for uh, uh, knowing the syntaxes of uh, various, means the syntax of uh, the constructs mainly. So today I will first uh, concentrate upon the constructs. Uh, the selection constructs and the looping constructs, then uh, we will see something new uh, if the time permits. Okay, so first uh, let us uh, see a program where we are going to use if if selection construct. So you remember that if if you are using if selection construct, the meaning of that is uh, the if selection construct is used when, if you want to execute a selective part of the code. So if you are want to execute a selective part of the code, then you will go for this if construct. Then it has the syntax. Uh, just uh, I'll just show you the syntax which is there in C. The same we will uh, see how we are using in Java. Okay. Uh, Just a second. Yeah. I hope my screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This if construct is there. If construct is there. Uh, just a second, I will be back. Just a second. Well, the if uh, construct, if you observe, uh, in case of C, then if condition, if condition is true, then the statements are executed. Otherwise, those statements are skipped. So this we have learned in C language. Uh, likewise, we have uh, if else also, if the condition is true, the, st uh, the statements will be executed. Otherwise, those statements will be skipped. OK, then we have the if else also. If else if ladder also where nested uh, we have the nested if where if condition is true then it enters into that block and uh, if again some condition is true then the statements will be executed otherwise the statements will be executed okay then we have an if else uh, ladder where if the condition is true the statements will be executed otherwise the further conditions will be checked here the same kind of uh, uh, things the same syntax is also used in Java. 
it has if uh, i'll say if it has tested if it has a uh, else ladder so if you see a program now where uh, uh, where we are going to check whether a given number is even or not okay some even or odd uh, i will just uh, discuss see for the program as biggest of three numbers now let us see this program so in this three program in this program say so we have assigned numbers a is equals to 10 b is equals to 20 and c is equals to 3 see this all code or whatever we have written here which i am just highlighting now is actually the c code only only the thing here is there we used to write printf now we are going to we are writing here system dot out dot println so here uh a is assigned with 10 b is assigned with 20 and c is assigned with 3 then i am displaying those numbers in the last class i discussed this program that uh, a will be concatenated that means for concatenation we are going to use uh, uh, plus here so whatever is there in this quotation will be displayed like this then a number 10 will be displayed then we have a small space between that then again 20 will be displayed again you have a small space here then the p is displayed then we have a syntax here if a is greater than b and a is greater than c then if this condition is true then big is displayed as a otherwise else if again if b is greater than c then b is displayed otherwise else c will be displayed so this all stuff whatever is written here is the c code of the c code so as uh, we have discussed in the last class you have to save this name and save the program name with this name big of three numbers so i have already done this program so just i will uh, go and execute this programs so now execute this program this is some in, uh, means now java c big of three numbers dot java program will be compiled after the compilation uh, you can have the result <coughs> yes then we have java the cop three num Yeah, the biggest is twenty. Twenty is displayed. Okay, so otherwise, if I change something in this program, so if I change uh, this EA, if I make EA as hundred, then I have saved it. So because we have made changes, I need to compile the program again. After compilation, see at this time, big is displayed at hundred. Again, I will go to the program this time and make it three hundred. Save it. Go back. compile it then biggest is 300 okay so the same syntax so that is what about the selection constructs one of the selection constructs we have if selection construct and switch case collection uh, selection construct switch case i will discuss in the coming programs when we discuss some other programs i will discuss a uh, switch case but this is how we are going to um, uh, use if and else if okay then uh, uh, after this uh, uh, then how the even and odd numbers i want to print uh, the numbers the even and odd numbers below 100 up to 100 so even numbers i am printing from 1 to between 
from 1 to 100 and odd numbers I'm going to print from 100 to 1. So here also what I just uh, uh, I'm, uh, want to tell you here is the la Java is also having some looping constructs. You know that in looping constructs uh, as we have learned in C that uh, in C language we have learned the looping constructs where the set of statements will be iteration constructs or looping constructs in where the selected uh, piece of code will be repeated for a certain number of time or until a condition is met. And we have the for construct where we have the for initialization, condition checking, re-evaluation parameters. As if we have for loop there, uh, the same for loop is used here. First, uh, we have the initialization part, then the condition is part. Here also, first the initialization is done. Then the condition is checked. If the condition is true, then the statements are executed. Otherwise, uh, the sta th those statements and the particular piece of code will be skipped. Okay. And every time when it is going back, the revaluation parameter will be uh, uh, means the revaluation parameters will be uh, first of all done. Then again, the condition is checked. Then the statements are executed. So the same way I have written uh, here also in Java. Say we have the execute uh, the statements as long as the condition is true. Then we have the uh, co initialization, condition checking, and reevaluation parameters. Then we have the body of the loop here. So the same set of statements will be executed. So uh, here I have written a program. If you observe that, I want to print the uh, 1 to 100 number means the even numbers from 1 to 100 and odd numbers from 100 to 1. So first I will execute the program, then I will uh, explain you the code. Uh, Java C even odd dot Java. Uh, I need not compile it because uh, once uh, it is compiled, then uh, it can be executed. Okay, even odd. It is com compiled. Then we have Java even odd C L. Now even numbers from 1 to 100 are displayed and odd numbers from 100 to 1 are displayed. Okay, so how the piece of code is executed here? How the piece of code is executed for i is equals to 1. Here also, first the initialization part is done. Okay, then int i is equals to 1, i less than or equal to 100, i plus plus. Okay, then i is 1 is initialized first time. 1 percentage 2 is equals to 0 is false. That's why this statement is not executed. Then it will go back. I plus plus. I becomes 2. 2 less than 100 is true. Then 2 percentage 2 is equals to 0. Then 2 is printed. Next it goes for 3. I plus plus is 3. 3 less than 100 is true. Then again it comes back. 3 percentage 2 is equal to 0 is false. So that's the reason why 3 is not printed. Then I plus plus. I becomes 4. 4 less than 100 true 4 percentage 2 is again 0 then 4 is printed likewise up to 100 for each and every number it is checked and uh, uh, this statement is just this separator because i just want to separate uh, uh, those two that's why i have used this one then i have odd numbers where it is coming from int i is equals to 100 i greater than 0 from reverse it is going to come so first time when i is 100 100 percentage 2 not equal to 0 is false Again, it will go back. I minus minus. I becomes uh, I becomes uh, um, 99. 99 percentage two not equal to zero is true. Then 99 is printed. Then again, it will go back. I becomes 98. 98 percentage two is equal to zero. Uh, 98 percentage two not equal to zero is false. That's why it is not printed. Again, it will go to 97 and it will continue. Okay, the, this is how we are going to run the means use the for loop also. Now, what is a new thing which uh, uh, I, need, I need to highlight here and also you might have observed that I have declared the variable inside a for loop. So in C, we have not done this. We, have, we are, we are uh, declaring all the variables at the beginning of the program and then we are going to use it either in the for loops or whatever the portion of the program where the variables are required. So we are going to declare the variables in the beginning. In the beginning of the program, there, those will be the first statements. And uh, if you if you might have gone through the text the means the notes which we have, and let's see. So just I will show you that point also that 
say in case of see all the variables will be declared see uh, each program have the function body comprises of two parts program structure so variable declaration and executable statements all variables required so this is the first thing uh, means uh, which i have given you the notes in case of in the way all variables required in the function must be declared before any executable statement means if suppose any executable statement starts now the meaning of that is uh, uh, this is an executable statement means it is executing and it is displaying something on the screen so in case of c you have to declare before uh, that statement whatever variables are required but in case of java that is not a case also in case of c++ or in java wherever you want you can declare the variables it's not something that you have to go to the beginning of the program and then only you have to declare the variables it's not like that wherever you want you can go and you can declare you can uh, uh, declare the variables but one strict rule is that wherever uh, i mean it's wherever the variable is declared it can be used only in that place only it cannot be used outside the meaning of that is see i is declared inside a for loop then this i can be used only in this block only in this for loop block okay it cannot be declared it cannot be used anything outside so that is a very uh, uh, important thing here that means the scope of the variable the scope of the variable is limited to only the block in which it is declared okay even though i is already declared once it is coming out of this block i is unknown i is unknown okay again i is declared inside this for loop Okay, I is made inside this for loop, and now, uh, 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 now again you have to declare it because you may not think that because I I is already declared uh, before this we can use it directly here. It's not possible. Okay, so because it is declared inside a for loop, it is declared inside a for loop, so it can be used only in the for loop, only in that block. That is what it means. so we will have a scope of the variables also there uh, again i will discuss the same topic but remember that wherever you want you can declare the variables okay understood this point everyone yes sir sir okay fine fine this is another program which we have then uh, the next thing here likewise uh, uh, we have the while and do while also uh, okay while and do while as uh, the program comes because uh, some new concepts which i will add later on then uh, we will discuss those next uh, program is uh, to greet a user you want to greet a user means greeting a user means the user will give his name okay the user will give his name then uh, we, uh, it will greet see i will show you the uh, output of the program uh, java greet user already program is there i will show you the code mcas second sir students this is the see here hello mca second semester students right so i want i want the program output like this so something i am giving it at the command prompt okay something i am giving at the command prompt then i should get the output like this mca second semester students here okay so uh, how this program is going to work now how uh, this is a next very new thing which you are going to learn in java the thing here is you can give you can give the strings you can pass the arguments to the programs from the command prompt you can pass the arguments from the command prompt and those arguments which have been passed to the program will be stored in this string array in this string array as i told you in the earlier this argument string 
this arch is an array of type string so whatever you are going to give it at the command prompt those strings are going to store store it store in this array now so here as i have given you the comment arch is an array of type string class so string is a not an data type here it is a class okay but right now uh, let us not go into much details about what is that class here so just uh, remember that whatever the argument which are giving arch is an array of type string which stores strings at the given at the command prompt given at the command prompt so i am going to give it there i am going to give them there then uh, uh whatever i am giving means if something is given here now i have given here some mca second semester in the first case mca second semester without any spaces i have given it why i will tell you the reason why i will tell you the reason here so mca second semester students then that mca second semester students will be stored in arcs of 0 arcs of 0 so that's what is the nature of java it is a dynamic language as i told you in the in case of features of object or means features of uh, java java is a dynamic language means there we have mentioned a point that a lot of activity is done at the run time means initially the size of the array is not mentioned here but once you give the uh, once you give the string here automatically the array is created and in that array this string is stored so this mca second semester will be stored at half sub 0 that's the reason why so this all stuff just uh, for for time being don't uh, uh, consider about this okay just think out this so hello whatever i am giving a half sub 0 will be concatenated and it will be displayed okay right now uh, uh, why uh, uh, here i am giving in the quotation so if i don't give in the quotations what happens here see the difference i am not giving the quotations and i am giving this then what is the output only mca only mca the re the thing here is now when i give it java great user mca second semester students without quotations mca will be stored in arcs of 0 mc this two second will be stored in arcs of 1 okay this this a uh, two is stored in arcs of 1 semester is stored in arcs of 2 and students will be stored in arcs of 3 means an array of size 4 will be created dynamically an array of size 4 will be created in that at zero eighth position mca string will be stored at one position to the second will be stored semester will be stored at the th third position and students will be stored at the fourth position that is arcs of 0 arcs of 1 arcs of 2 arcs of 3 and because i am so saying here to print only uh, uh, arcs of 0 only arcs of 0 will be printed okay that's why only mc is displayed so because it is a multiple string because i want to display it as a means combined string then if i give it in the quotation so entire string will be stored at out sub 0 okay so that's the difference so if i give it like this okay without any spaces everything will be stored so if i'm giving it uh it's spaces only mca is taken right fine okay so next point here or no what about if i don't give anything the next case here is what if if i am not giving anything for time being i am uh, making this entire code as a comment here purposefully i am making it as a comment without explaining you uh because i made some changes there i'm compiling it now see here i'm not giving anything not giving anything and trying to execute it now i have an exception uh, I, i i have an exception here 
exception in thread main java dot language array index out of bound exception so it is saying this array index out of bounds exception this so uh, this is a built in class exception there so what what is this what is the meaning of this so something at a uh, 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 has happened some exception has been raised some unusual situation abnormal situation has been raised here okay so at uh, 40 means at that 14th line it has at some some line in uh, code there so what does it mean what does it mean here is you are trying to access this piece of this line code because uh, the program has only one line right no though it has a lot of things here only one line program so hello arc of zero so what is there in arc of zero because you have not given anything there array is not created nothing is there in arc of zero array is not created at all and you are trying to access an array which is not created which is not having any element there that's the reason why as i told you that java is a uh, robust language strictly typed language it doesn't allow anything to access an array out of bounds so when it is not very uh, when array is not there you are trying to access an array when array is not there you are trying to access an array that's the reason why so it is throwing an exception there. okay that is it is showing an exception okay so to, uh, if some error is displayed like this to an user then the user won't uh, means cannot understand what actually has happened so to overcome this what we have done here is we have included this piece of code now this piece of code is included so what what is done here what is done here in this c arcs dot length if arcs dot length is equals to 0 this is built in uh, uh, variable arcs dot length returns the length of the array automatically it is going to length return the length of the array when array is not created when nothing is actually passed when nothing is passed then arcs of length the length of the array is 0 length of the array is 0 then if arcs dot length is equals to 0 then what i am doing system dot out dot print ln usage you are telling the user user usage use like this java hello message or sorry greet user i have to change it here greet user space some string whatever string you want to give you give it means you are telling the user to give it in this form and from here itself you are saying system dot exit if you remember in c you have exit 0 or exit 1 what it is going to do it is going to terminate the program it is going to come out of the program okay so exit 1 from there itself you are going to come out of the program so now if i uh, uh now if i do this see the difference earlier i got uh, this particular message this particular message now i am getting means a meaningful message to the user usage is like this you give it like this you are telling the user like this then if you give it as per something so then it will say hello talking now means java greet user a string what is whatever the string you want to give you give it then it is going to display got it any doubt for anyone no oh, sir what about others please respond no sir no sir no sir no sir no sir okay fine no sir understood na no? okay fine thank you thank you Okay, so that is the way. Now you can give you something at the command prompt, and then you can perform the operations. You can give it the command prompt, and you can pass anything from the command prompt, and uh, you can perform the operations. Okay, now let us go with uh, for another program now. Let us go for another program. Uh, in this program. Uh,
Now I want to find the factors of a given number. I want to find the factors of a given number. Now, see this. Factors of a given number in the sense, uh, what is this program name? Factors of num. Okay. Factors of 20. So 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. So I'm giving factors of some 58, 258. I have a factors like this, which are displayed here. Okay, now. How, how actually we are going to get this? The logic already we have uh, uh, learnt in C. Learnt in C. So for i is equals to 0, you are going to start from 1, i less than n by 2 half of that number. Because uh, the last but one factor will be either equal to half, half of the number or equal to uh, uh, less than the half of the number. Uh, basic upon that, I am going to go up to half of the number then first if n percentage 1 is equals to 0 so if suppose 10 i am giving 10 percentage 1 is equals to 0 is true then 1 is printed again i plus plus i becomes 2 uh, 2 less than 5 10 percentage 2 is equals to 0 2 is printed again i becomes 3 3 less than 5 10 percentage 3 is equals to 0 is false again i plus plus i becomes 4 4 less than 5 is true 10 percentage 4 is equals to 0 is false. Again, go to uh, uh, i plus plus i becomes 5. 10 percentage 5 is equals to 0, then uh, it is true, then i is printed. 5 is printed. i plus plus i becomes 6. 6 less than or equal to 5 is false. It will come to this statement. And last, because anyhow the number itself is a factor that also is printed. That's the reason why I'm going to get all the factors. So this all stuff uh, we have learned in C. The same thing is repeated here. Now, what's new we are going to discuss here? So, what is all this one which is mentioned here? What is uh, the thing which is uh, shown here? Now, as we have just discussed that in case of greet user program, uh, uh, we are seeing hello Kakinada. So, it, uh, I had just said that at arc sub zero, Kakinada is stored. At arc sub zero, Kakinada is stored. And Kakinada is a string, and axe array is actually a string array. String array. No, though if I give, uh, uh, if I give something, our factors of number twenty. No, it is not actually twenty there. It is a string two zero. It's not twenty here. It is string two zero. Okay, two zero is stored. So. It is it is stored in the form of string. So twenty is the two zero is stored at arc of zero as a string. It's not a number there. So what I have to do here is I have to convert this string into a number. And I need to convert a string into a number. To, con to convert a string into a number, we have a method called parse int. We have a static method called why I am saying it as a static method, we will talk about uh, more uh, clearly about it once we discuss static methods. But right now remember that pass int is a static method and static methods can be, uh, means it, it is coming from integer class. So we have a built-in class called integer which contains a static method pass int. The purpose of pass int method is to convert a string into a number. So because you are giving it 20 here, 20 number which is stored at arcs of 0 is converted into, sorry, 20 which is in the form of string is converted into 20 and it will be stored in n. So once it is converted, happily you can use it. Once it is converted, happily you can use it and then the rest of the story is same. The rest of the thing is same. Okay. And here, uh, uh, okay, rest of the logic is same, uh, you can use it easily. 
here also I have not mentioned the condition. So what if, if I am not going to give anything here, it is going to raise an exception. So that I have to include it because I have not included it. I, I am leaving you uh, uh, at your disposal. You can use it. You can uh, you, you can write the piece of code also. If a user is not uh, entering the number, how what the program has to do there. So whatever is here, now if I say any number, I am giving the practice of that number. First, the number given a number in the form of the string is converted into an integer, and then it will be displaying that uh, uh, the factors of that number. Okay. And we have So I'll discuss in the tomorrow's class. Okay, fine. So that's it. Uh, we have discussed the selection constructs today. Uh, we have seen how to uh, enter uh, uh, means give a string at the command prompt and then how to convert the string into a number and then use it. So any doubts regarding this? Anyone? No doubt. No, sir. Okay, no. fine. Then you practice this. Uh, we will uh, continue in the next class. So I will be introducing you daily. We will have something new to be discussed. Okay, so just uh, be regular to the classes. Don't miss them. Daily we will have something new to be discussed. Okay, thank you.